Hey guys, Savage Joy here with Real Progressives. Tonight I am joined with Mr. Adam Davis. He is running in Utah um, as a Green for Congress in District 1. Um, so thank you so much for joining us tonight, Adam. I know it was kind of like a, a last minute thing. No, that's fine. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, Adam was recommended by a mutual Facebook friend, and those are the um, kind of candidates I love finding out about because I trust my Facebook friends to recommend people I actually would want on. Um, <laughs> so, Adam, you were a computer science major in school. Um, can yep. you tell us about what you do with that degree? What do you uh, What do you do full time during the day? So for my job, I'm an enterprise software consultant, which is kind of a really fancy way of saying that companies buy all this really complicated software and then they pay us to help them use it. So it's, it's not terribly exciting, but you know, you gotta pay the bills. <laughs> cool, so you actually, what, what makes you decide to go from computer science to I'm gonna run for Congress? Well, I, I kind of had a sense, I, partially I kind of had a sense of, well, somebody has to. Um, clearly, you know, the Republicans and the Democrats just aren't uh, getting it done. There's, there's a lot of problems there. So I first got involved with uh, the Green Party here in Utah um, shortly after the 2016 election. Um, uh, we were able to get Jill Stein here on the ballot as an unaffiliated candidate since there wasn't an organized Green Party here in Utah. Um, we have since organized the Green Party and and so part of the, the decision um, was to help with ballot access. Um, it's a, it's a, a bigger race. Utah requires us to each election cycle have a candidate garner two percent of the statewide vote to maintain ballot access so we need a bigger race uh, for that so that that was part of the decision um in addition i i chose congressional district one because it's it's where i'm from so i grew up in uh, ogden utah which is um about 35 miles or so north of salt lake uh, it's about an hour drive roughly and so having I grew up there. That's the the congressional district that, that I grew up in, um, and so my pretty much my entire adult life, um, Rob Bishop has been a congressman there, and it's 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 time for somebody to to help him retire. Hell yeah! So speaking of which, a lot of people do uh, talk about term limits. Um, my fear is a, a gentleman named Bernard Sanders. I don't want him going anywhere because he's the only one <laughs> fighting for our asses. But what is your, your thought about term limits? So part of, part of, I think, the problem with our current congressional makeup is that we largely, we largely, elect, we largely elected people to represent their party rather than representing their constituents. Um, I, I think it, at least um, given the other circumstances surrounding our political system right now, I think that's likely to get worse if, if, if all we do is implement term limits. I, I think you're likely to see more sort of plug and play um, candidates that, that basically are only there to represent their party and not their constituents. Um, so I, I think I think it could have value, but we have to pair it with other reforms. Otherwise, I think you're only making the problem worse. Yeah, absolutely. You um, actually, can you try unplugging your headphones for a moment? It because it's kind of garbled. Sure. Um, I hear, um, but. So when you decided to run, you had the option of what party am I going to run in? And I've noticed with candidates, you know, you can go strategically or, you know, it's it's a huge decision. It's huge. Um, so how did you decide to go with running as a Green? Well, um, it, it really stemmed from my... In involvement in being in the Green Party. Um, 
So really it, it came down to just having left the Democratic Party, having joined the Green Party, and, and having the experience of sort of helping from the ground up get the party running. Um, it just really was a no-brainer as far as to run specifically as a Green. So you do actually have election reform on your platform, which every single candidate should, especially if they call themselves progressives. Um, what ideally would you like to see? Because th that is like the hugest clusterfuck in the world. So there's like a million different layers of, of shit that needs to be addressed. Um, what <laughs> what um, are your primary um, hopes for that topic? So one of the things that I'm heartened to see gaining some momentum is uh, ranked choice voting, which is a great step. Um, they've they've now voted for it in Maine. Uh, we have some uh, implementation, I, I believe, here in Utah. There was a bill that passed a couple of years ago, and I think it's supposed to be um, being used in primaries now. Um, so that's that's definitely on my list in terms of just making sure that we have a better voting system. Um, I'm a big fan of what's called the, I believe it's the Fair Vote Act, if I remember right. Um, it was introduced by a representative from Virginia. And what I like about it is it creates uh, multi-member districts that elect between three and five congressional members each. And then, and then those elections were then run by ranked choice vote. Um, and it would allow for proportional representation where um, you wouldn't have necessarily, if you have an, an area, for example, in Utah, um, some areas might be, you know, overall the state tends to run maybe 65, 35, but that's not, where the representation actually is because, um, I mean, because of gerrymandering and everything else, but also because of these single member districts. And so I'm, I'm a fan of that. I, I think that's a, a really nice idea that, that we could run with. Um, I'd like to see public financing of elections. Um, I, I think it's just time that, that we stopped pussyfooting around with the, you know, private money and what this is allowed and this isn't and that. Just publicly finance it, let's get it over with and, and let's let's get to a system we can all live with. Absolutely. Um, do me a favor, um, can you just take out your headphones, like unplug them completely? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's see if that works, you guys. I'm sorry. Um, it's it's hard. We're across the country from sorry. each other, so. Um, but okay. you know, it, it's interesting. I've never had someone from Utah on my show. <laughs> um, oh. and, you know, there there's two things that we typically think about when we think about Utah: um, Sundance Film Festival and Mormons. So, in your district, are are people open to third parties, to progressive ideals? Like, what what is your what are your constituents like? Um, I have a really interesting um, mishmash of of spaces in my constituency. Um, so, my my district runs. Um, from there's all kinds of uh, kind of farm and, and rural areas and small towns up in kind of the northwest of Utah into Ogden, which is an old railroad town. Um, it's very blue collar, uh, very urban uh, kind of an area. It's, um, Park City is in the district. You mentioned Sundance, um, which, which of course is, is very urban, very kind of cosmopolitan sort of urban rural mix. Um, and then out to the east, um, I have a certain, um, I have part of the uh, Ute Reservation in eastern Utah um, in my district, and there's a couple of, there's several small towns out there. Um, it's, it's an incredibly um, 
it, it's geographically sprawling and it's it's a very it's a very diverse district from a lot of different uh, standpoints. Um, but I I found people largely uh, receptive, um, as I guess a lot of people would expect. I, I tend to get crap more from the Democrats than I do from Republicans. The Republicans tend to largely ignore me. And <laughs> Um, but I, I've also found that there's a lot of people who are frustrated, they're, they're fed up with what the Democrats and the Republicans, with where they've brought us. Um, and I, I think they're excited. I think there's a lot of people that are excited to have somebody speaking to that. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that, you know, that's, I think uh, running third party is a wise move for a lot of people. The only people who have come on my show as a Dem are pretty much ones who in their state would have to get 5,000 signatures within a week to run independent and pay $10,000, things mm -hmm. like this. So you're fortunate that you could do that in your state because there are so many, you know, just issues barriers set up around people running those for those parties i forgot to ask are you guys open primary or closed so um the, the, we i'm trying to remember um i believe we the green party are open um the state of utah allows each party um to choose whether they're open um semi-open which which means party members and independents or closed um, and, and if I remember right we're open the party gets to choose that yeah whoa that's kind of amazing <laughs> I've never heard a lot of really kind of odd stuff about Utah's election law this is something that's really kind of cool yeah I mean I I still don't trust that the Dems wouldn't you know, pull a win out of their ass and make it closed. But still, I think that's pretty cool that they at least give the option. What are your, um, <laughs> uh, what are your uh, competitors like, lack of a better term? What are the people you're going up against like? How many are there um, Dems, Republicans? So um, this is gonna be kind of a fun uh, race. So there's Rob Bishop, the there's a 16 year now incumbent um who's i mean frankly he's kind of an ass um there's there's i mean there's videos of him in a congressional hearing um talking to a man named sean chapusi and his first words are let's get this crap over with so um yeah so that's, that's the incumbent Republican. Um, right now, we're waiting on the results of a Democratic primary. Um, there are two Democrats, uh, Lee Castillo and Kurt Weiland. Um, Lee Castillo would be um, the first openly um, LGBT Hispanic um, person elected from Utah. I, I don't remember if that includes state office or if that's just um, federal offices. But um, I'm sorry, there, what is their name? Lee Castillo. Oh, okay. And Kurt Weiland, W E I L A N D. <laughs> um, so we're kind of we're kind of awaiting um, the the results of that primary. Um, so Lee's kind of the youthful, um, uh, really energetic um, kind of guy. Kurt Weiland is is a little bit older um, gentleman. Um, and so, and then we have, um, we actually have another third party candidate in this race um, from the, it's called the Utah United Party. Um, and it's, I, I believe it's, it's affiliated with the national um, um, US United or, or America United or something along those lines um, party. And his name is Eric Elison. Um, uh, I, I'm just a little bit younger as, as candidates tend to go um, but I don't know. He seems, I guess he seems, seems all right. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> he's, he's affable enough. <laughs> <laughs> so what is, what is that party comparable to? Is that kind of like your, your independent party in Utah or? 
they're they're very much about centrists. Oh. Um, so they're didn't. So they're like idea, Democrats. They're, what's that? They're like Democrats. <laughs> um, kind of in in Utah, they're they're sort of um, super moderate Republicans. Wow. That's what they amount to. You have um, things on your platform, like, you know, basically the the typical litmus test for progressives. Um, you do support single payer. Um, can you um, explain why you put that on your platform? Why are you passionate about that? So, I mean, A, there's no reason for people not to have health care. Just period, straight up. There, there's no reason that people, that, that there should be people that can't get health care in this country. Um, B, I mean, personally, um, I've, I mean, I'm, I'm currently dealing with the, you know, some of the results of, you know, how screwed up our, our, uh, our health care system, quote unquote, is um, so I'm I'm diabetic myself. Um, I just got done paying off the hospital bill from when I found out I was diabetic, and um, I mean it just and, and that was with insurance. Um, you know I'm, I'm insured now and I'm having trouble. You know I'm kind of struggling a little bit with all the all the stuff I've got to pay all the time. Um, I mean it just. So I, I mean, I, I understand as, you know, as, as, I think as much as most other people, how, just how jacked up the system is and how really insurance companies are holding people's lives in their uh, greedy little clutches. Absolutely. You do, I saw on your platform that you do support a federal job guarantee, which is something yes. we talk about all the time with every single candidate. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, I actually that that was something that I was really adamant about from day one. Um, that 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 was actually really kind of my fund big fundamental push. Um, so I've I, I've been I've been trying to talk about this for about a year now. Um, I mean, it just I I, I mean, we need I mean, people need jobs at this point, you know, to, to where our economy is, um, you know, it's, it's a way to make improvements in our community. You know, it, it's a way that we could um, get our energy grid transitioned. You know, it can help give people a sense of ownership in their community. It's a way to provide a stability in, in terms of making sure people are able to meet their needs that we don't have right now. Absolutely. Um, you also, um, you talk about um, green energy. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that go um, into the environmental um, category, lack of a better term, but that also, you know, falls into federal job guarantee. What what Absolutely. things would you like to concentrate on as far as that, in that respect? Um, in terms of energy or? Um, environment. Wait, where do I start? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a big, broad topic. <laughs> so I, I think our electrical grid is, is a good starting place. It's um, it's kind of an easy one to see. Um, it's you know it's it's one that's talked about a lot. So I think it's I think it's a good um, I think it's a good starting point. Um, there's there's momentum behind it, but obviously there's a lot more to go along with that. Um, um, I think we've got to start working on reduction of the manufacturing of plastics, especially petroleum based plastics. Um, and, and part of part of that, I think, could be. Um, I, I think we could roll that in with ending the war on drugs. 
um, because hemp could, can be a great um, source for, for plant-based compostable plastics that can replace a lot of that. Um, I mean, it, it just, the, that, that material in particular is just doing so much damage and we've, we've got to start um, moving away from it. Um, so in, in the Green Party in particular, we've been working locally um, with a really cool uh, campaign called Strawless and SLC. Um, so they have started with focusing on single use plastic straws, um, like in restaurants and whatnot. Um, uh, they've gotten, uh, for those that are familiar with the restaurant Costa Vida, um, we've gotten them to agree to go to compostable straws um, to start sourcing those. Um, you know, we, we've, we've kind of built um, uh, a good public uh, sort of momentum for people to, to generally stop using straws um, or the, at least stop using the single use straws. So that, that's a really cool campaign that we've been involved in locally. Um, then I, I, think, I think on a national scale, um, we need to start addressing it. Absolutely. Um, so on that note, I'm guessing you are for legalizing cannabis. Oh yeah, there's no reason not to. Now, does your state have a uh, medical marijuana? Um, we don't currently. It's actually um, it's actually on the ballot. Um, oh. This year. So there's 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 a there's a big push behind that. Um, so of course, one of the, one of the things that's going on is, um, the campaign against that is trying to use recreational as sort of, uh, sort of a scare tactic against it, that it'll lead to recreational and yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> because damn it, why feel better? Right. <laughs> to be sick. If something is natural and it helps you, sorry still the the devil's lettuce so you guys your state actually votes on tuesday right um we have we have primaries on tuesday right yeah but you yourself are not up in that you know on mm -hmm. that ballot because you're green so you can kind of keep campaigning till november yeah yeah i i'm unopposed in primary so i, I was nominated at convention that's awesome. So you've already won your primary. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> so along the line, <laughs> along the lines of um, you know uh, legalizing cannabis, do you guys have um, for-profit prisons in Utah? Um, I believe we do some. I, I think it's a mixture of of for-profit and, and public. I think they have both. Because that definitely, it goes um, hand in that, hand. That's it, obviously. Um, what's that? It goes hand in hand, especially with people of color. It does. It does, absolutely. I, I, that was one I, I had trouble believing that existed for a couple of days after I, I started reading about it. Like, that just, that, that just blew me away that, that, that that's even a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just it, it just speaks to how how far um, off track we are. I think as a, as a society that we would that we would think that it's okay to make money off of prison. Yep, and and the the Clintons are you know they've certainly made their money doing that as well. It's it's in you know that's one of the reasons a lot of people couldn't vote for them. It's 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 abhorrent. Um, and and kind of on the the line of speaking about black and brown people, you do have immigration reform on your platform, and of course that's pretty prevalent right now because for like two weeks that's all you see on social media, yeah. rightfully so. Um, so what are your thoughts about um, everything that's going on, and also if there's anything you want to add to your to that on your platform ever since um, you know these past few days. So, I mean, obviously, this is 
So the, the announcement today, um, yeah, I, I hope people don't get too distracted with it. Um, so for, for those, for, for anybody that, that might not um, have heard the specifics, um, the, the Trump administration announced today that they are going to end the policy of separating families, um, but they are going to continue prosecutions, which basically means they're just going to lock the family up together, which is not in any way, shape, or form a, a solution to anything. So there's that. Um, and it also doesn't bring back the families who have already been separated. It does nothing to them. Correct. This is like from today forward. Um, so people are getting really hype and like celebrating and don't. <laughs> no, no, there, there, there's nothing to celebrate in any of this. No. Um, I'm, 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 I'm glad that they're not going to continue to do it, but the, there's nothing here to be celebrated. Um, I mean, we've got to stop being so damn afraid of immigration. That's what it really boils down to. We got to stop being so damn afraid of this. I mean, they're people, okay? They're people. And if we can't start there, then I don't know what the hell we're doing as a country. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, everybody loves to complain about laws and whatnot. So, I mean, two things. Number one, everybody that's showing up at the border right now is seeking asylum, which is exactly how you seek asylum. That is the legal process. So, number one, what they're doing is legal right now. And number two, first-time entry is a misdemeanor that's akin to a speeding ticket. We're talking about people like this over what is essentially a speeding ticket. Where, where the hell are we that we talk about people like this over something that's as serious as a speeding ticket? Absolutely. And something that um, it, it just blows my mind is that people can't empathize with why immigrants would want to come here. And I mean, personally, if I was watching my family be blown up and didn't have food and water, water and seeing, you know, your neighbors bloody in the street, like, I'm not exaggerating, you know, but if you see that shit, no. why the hell wouldn't you want to leave? Like, they're so crazy for wanting to get out of that. And half the time it's us who's causing that mayhem. But yet they still rather they still feel safer on our land. I can't blame them. It's no. so heartless to turn your back on those who who need us. So that's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be really interesting to see how candidates um, you know, put these things on their platform. What do you hope to see in you know in the next month or two? Well, I'd like to see some more progress made in how we're in how we're treating these families, obviously that are that are seeking asylum. Um, I, I've said that I'd I'd be interested to look into the idea of sort of building along the southern border um, some sort of like an Ellis Island esque, um, basically town. Um, so so for anybody who's not familiar with like with the way back history of Ellis Island. Um, they used to have um, places for people to stay on Ellis Island um, where they could, you know, be medically examined, you know, they can make sure that people weren't bringing diseases in, yada, yada, and, and they could stay there. So I, I like to see us um, like building some sort of town or community that these people could stay in while, well, you know, their applications for asylum. Are, are being are being reviewed and processed and whatnot um you know and they, they would house somewhere that they could live you know we could we could provide a, a small house you know i mean it doesn't have to you know we don't have to build mansions or anything but i mean let's let's see if we can't provide something you know where people can where we're not putting them in a, an intense city that looks that frankly it looks like a concentration camp 
Yeah, it's it's terrifying. Um, if what is your hope come November? Should you win the election? What what is your hope? What do you hope? What what would be your focus when you first get into office? Um, I, I think my first, my first thing that I, that I'd like to, um, to work on. So I've, uh, um, kind of expanding on, on sort of the job guarantee and, and the healthcare. Um, I, I've worked on what I'm, on what I'm calling a worker's bill of rights. Okay. We, um, I, I think, you know, especially those of us here on, um, that consider ourselves progressive, you know, we understand the working class is getting and, and everything. So, so included in those workers' bill of rights is the job guarantee, single payer health care. I also want guaranteed paid sick leave, guaranteed paid vacation, guaranteed paid parental leave, um, in terms of like maternal and paternal leave. Um, I, I'd like to see us put together a package of incentives um, for co-ops, for worker co-ops. Um, I, I think really that has to be the work of the future. Um, you know, we've got we've got to bring democracy into the workplace, um, and and give workers control of of, of their work. Um, so that's that's kind of the I guess the first thing on my list. I think that's an awesome place to start. If you want to leave um, our viewers with something so that they check out your website um, or recommend you to people in Utah. What do you want to leave them with? Um, just, I, I hope that I've, I've been able to um, kind of show you guys what, what we can, what we can be and what we can do. Um, if, if we can finally get our heads out of voting in fear. And, and start voting out of hope and start voting out of values um, and, and you know, get free from the, but look at the other guy and, and you know, stop being afraid and, and let's, and come join me and let's move forward together. That's, that's what, that's what I'm, I'm trying to do here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to, to get us out of a system that, that, really has has chained us inside of the two of, of the two major parties politically. Absolutely. Do you want to give your your website and your Facebook and all that fun stuff? Yeah. So my website is um just Davis for Utah dot com for spell out F O R. And then you can just search Adam Davis for Utah's first district on Facebook. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Davis for Utah. Um, and you can find us there. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Adam. I've, I've kind of been blowing up his PMs the past few days since we met. Um, he's got a good sense of humor and he's got a kind heart and that's kind of how I, you know, it means a lot to me as a voter because I'm not voting for an asshole unless they're an asshole towards Shillery. Um, but if you're an asshole towards the people, you're not getting my vote. <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> um, oh, I can be an asshole to the establishment, too. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> um, so Tuesday is um, Utah, Colorado, Maryland, Oklahoma, and New York. If you are in the Bronx, get off your fucking asses and vote for Alexandria Ocasio. No excuses. That girl needs to win. Get off your ass and do it. She rocks. Um, so we have those um, choices on Tuesday. And then we are off for July. I mean, I'll be here, you know, still interviewing candidates who run, um, who have their primaries in August. Uh, but July, there are no primaries. So I'm going to kind of like cut back doing like eight shows a week um, since I work full time and just kind of, you know, uh, get back to being sane. Um, so Saturday I will be um, traveling to Washington, D.C. for the Poor People's March. Um, I'll be streaming um, 
Reverend Barber and, and the amazing speakers, and as well as interviewing people I meet there um, and just kind of going around and, and just kind of, you know, seeing what kind of shenanigans I can get into, of course, and, and fun things like that. But thank you guys so much for watching. Again, thank you so much, Adam. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Take care. Right.